And here is the Writer's Almanac for Friday. It's the 5th of January, 2018. It is 12th night, the eve of Epiphany, the official end of the Christmas season. The poet Robert Herrick wrote, Down with the rosemary and so down with the bays and mistletoe, down with the holly ivy all, wherewith ye dressed the Christmas hall. It used to be a big day in colonial America, particularly in Virginia. There was a big Twelfth Night Ball. A king and queen were chosen. George and Martha Washington didn't do much for Christmas. They just went to church. But they had elaborate Twelfth Night celebrations. It's the birthday of the mathematician Stephen Cole Clayney, born in Hartford in 1909, his career mostly at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. He worked with algorithms, one of the founders of recursion theory, a branch of mathematical logic, and a way to know whether certain kinds of mathematical problems are solvable or unsolvable, which led to the theory of computable functions, one of the building blocks of theoretical computers. Mr. Clayney was also a lifelong hiker, loved the woods, and his knowledge of mushrooms was legendary in Wisconsin. It's the birthday of the poet W.D. Snodgrass, born Wilkinsburg, Pennsylvania, 1926. Stella Gibbons, born London, 1902, author of Cold Comfort Farm, her parody of romance novels. Umberto Eco, born in the Piedmont region of Italy, 1932, author of the novels The Name of the Rose, Foucault's Pendulum, The Cemetery of Prague. Echo once said he knew there were sections of his books that people just skip over, but that he thought it was important they be there. He said, you think of the next-to-last chapter of Ulysses, in which James Joyce just describes Leopold Bloom's entire kitchen, every drawer. Sometimes I happen to go back and read a drawer. The first time I read it, what was impressive and important was this ideal of describing everything. It's the birthday of Libba Cotton, born in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, 1895, taught herself the guitar. She was a left-handed guitarist, best known for her song, Freight Train, which she wrote when she was 11 years old. And it's the birthday of Jack Norworth, Philadelphia, 1879. He was an actor on Broadway, sometimes wrote song lyrics, and though he had never been to a baseball game, one day in 1908, he took some notes and he sat down and wrote the words to take me out to the ball game. Albert von Tilzer, who had never seen a baseball game either, was the man who wrote the music. Here's a poem for today by Lewis Jenkins entitled January Again. January again, and the snow comes sudden and heavy. This is what we like best. This is what we paid our money for. Snow on snow, all day and all night, everything muffled, distant, tomorrow, no school, no work, no worship service, no visitation of the sick, the poor, the widows, or the orphans. Whatever it was, nothing can be done about it now. Your old position has been filled. Your footsteps have been filled. The roads are filled, drifted shut. All directions are obliterated in the heavy snowfall. A poem by Lewis Jenkins, January again from Just Above Water, published by Holy Cow Press and used by permission here on the Writer's Almanac, supported by Lumosity, introducing a 10-minute fit test to challenge memory, attention, and problem-solving to calculate baseline scores. Learn more at lumosity.com. And by Cabot Creamery Cooperative, Northeast farm families whose legacy was built by making naturally aged cheddar cheese and other dairy foods. Produced by Joy Biles, assisted by Kathy Roach. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch.